Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. In the early days of filming wildlife, as you'll see tonight, researchers had to capture animals in order to observe and learn from them. But that's no longer the case today. Modern technologies such as drones and satellite tracking offer new ways to study animals in their natural habitat with less intrusion from human touch. Wild Kingdom set the gold standard for nature programming and introduced generations of young people to the wonders of the natural world. Fortunately, the successful research that began with our original series helped many animals make a comeback from the threat of extinction. And that's good news for the wild kingdom. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by the company with coverage for everyone. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. If there ever was a problem that needed solving, it's the problem created by man's continual advance into the wilderness areas of the world. This results in many individual problems of animal survival, and they take many different forms. Our North American grizzly bear has never learned to get along with man. His numbers have declined so that now there are probably no more than a thousand of these fine creatures left in the United States. If something isn't done to reverse this decline, it's quite likely that within a generation, the grizzly bear will be found only in the natural history books. Many other animals face the same unhappy prospects of vanishing with the wilderness, such as this orangutan. The orang is on the critical list for several reasons. First of all, it's a very timid animal. It moves slowly, and therefore it's a good target for the poachers. These poachers kill the adult and then take the youngs for sale. Secondly, it's specialized for living in the forest, and these forests are rapidly being cut down. I think it's the combination of these two factors, over-specialization plus the encroachment by man, come on, Larry, that endangers most animals today. There are many examples like this. Here in our own country, the California condor is down to about 75 birds. The whooping crane remains at about 35. And here in Alaska, the walrus is dangerously threatened. In Asia and in Africa, there are many more examples of animals which are rapidly vanishing. The mountain gorilla, the cheetah, the giant panda, and of course, the orangutan. There are many people who are deeply concerned about these problems. One way of acting is through life history studies and research programs. Jim and I took part in such a program recently in Florida. We were in the Everglades with wildlife officers of the Florida Game and Freshwater Fish Commission conducting a study on alligators. Jim took the observer's seat on a swamp buggy designed for travel through mud and water. My job was to locate an alligator hole from the air and by radio guide Jim and driver Tom Morris through the tall grass to the exact spot. Finding the hole is one thing, but then you have to find the alligator. First you prod to see if he's in the main hole. It's a good thing he wasn't, or I might have ended up with one leg shorter than the other. If he's around, he'll probably be in one of the side tunnels. By pushing a rod through the muck, George Eddy found him. Now the job is to determine his exact location and dig him out. It's best to test occasionally to find out where the head end is. By the looks of the way he bent this rod, he must be a big one. In 
getting him out, we have to avoid the powerful slash of his tail and get a noose over one of his deadly jaws. And one rope isn't enough. With two ropes, we can hold him between us. Now the trick is to close his mouth so we can get a rope around both jaws. The stick will start it, but the most effective way is for someone to grab the front of the jaws with his hand. It takes a strong, steady hand for this assignment. One man is permanently assigned to keep the alligator's tail under control because this is a dangerous weapon. By tying him to a long pole placed along his back, he's completely immobilized. This fellow is being prepared for a trip. He'll be transported a distance of several miles from his hole and then released. We do this to find out how far from his hole he must be taken before he will not return. He'll be much quieter and therefore less likely to injure himself if he's blindfolded for his trip. It's also much better for the animal if he's moved as rapidly and smoothly as possible. A helicopter is just the answer for this. Many animals have homing instincts that we still don't fully understand. What if we later find an alligator in the same hole? How can we know if it's the same alligator or another one that's moved in while the owner was away? To solve this riddle, a system of tagging's been worked out. Gary Phelps, using a tattooing device, impresses a number on one of the large scales of his underside. In this way, a permanent individual identification mark is made. Now, if this fella comes home, we'll know for sure it's the same alligator. little guy is doing quite well. According to our records, he's growing about a foot a year. It is important for us to learn as much as we possibly can about alligators because the alligator is specialized for living in or near water and is always in more danger of vanishing than the animals that live in the drier areas. This is because the environment of water is more changeable by man and by nature. Jim visited an area in Africa that is in many ways similar to the Everglades. But there, the animal in danger of vanishing was not a reptile, but a rare antelope that has become specialized for water living, the red lechwe. The lechwe is in danger partly from becoming specialized and partly as a result of a local native custom. It used to be when the young man of the tribe married, he had to kill a female lechwe and present it to the father of his bride. As a result, lechwe have become quite rare in most parts of Central Africa and are now found only on the flood plains of the Kafui River in northern Rhodesia. The herd is on private land of Lochinvar Ranch. The ranch cooperates with the government in allowing game guards to be stationed there to guard the lechwe. This has been a year of drought, and food and water are scarce. The lechwe, though, are strongly territorial and are reluctant to leave their territory even when it's overgrazed. Since the natives have been stopped from killing the females, overpopulation has become a serious threat. To help solve this problem, the movements and habits of the animals are being studied, and growth records are kept to determine the number of lechwe that a given grazing area can support. The schedule today calls for us to cut a young lechwe out of the herd and catch him. This fellow was about one week old. Since this is a year of drought, we wanted to compare his weight with that of a week old lechwe born in a good year. We found he was somewhat undernourished. His measurements though were near normal. This extra long splayed foot is a special adaptation for travel through marshy ground. And travel is what we knew he'd do as soon as we turned him loose to join the herd. The study of this herd will be continued here, for this ranch is a research station dedicated to the preservation of the lechwe. 
Research stations and study programs are very valuable, but putting this knowledge to use is the real test. One of the most spectacular assortments of wildlife any place in the world is at Kruger National Park in South Africa. Here man really has a challenge. And one of the greatest challenges of all is fire. A game guard reports the fire to the park superintendent. These men must constantly watch for poachers who set fires in order to stampede the animals and kill them. Firefighters are dispatched and they go to work immediately around the perimeter to contain the fire and keep it from spreading throughout the park. Fire breaks are cut through the brush and backfires are lit to burn out an area that will be too wide for the fire to jump. Most of the animals escape. The real damage by the fire is the destruction of the plants and grasses the animals eat. The game guards in Kruger Park ride fence on one of the longest fences in the world. The great variety of animals here presents a real challenge in game management. By fencing in the area, man has assumed the responsibility of maintaining a proper balance between the animals themselves and between the animals and the land. Part of the problem is the crowding of animals around the natural water holes. This leads to overgrazing in the immediate area and to the rapid spread of disease. One solution has come through the use of windmills. Wells are drilled in dry areas, and windmills pump water into man-made water holes. Thus, some of the animals are attracted away from the overgrazed areas at the natural water holes. Elephants are common here in the park, and in order to study their feeding habits in relation to the water holes, someone has to catch an elephant and tag him, and that's no easy assignment. To do the job, park rangers have turned to an ancient weapon, the crossbow. This is the only weapon that will fire the huge projectile they must use, containing a giant-sized dose of a special morphine drug that induces a temporary drowsiness. Rangefinders were never used by the famous crossbowmen of early times, but then they never shot at elephants. The drug acts quickly and the rangers go right to work, taking a blood sample and tagging an ear. Tests of body functions will give close to normal readings, since the animal is merely drowsy and not unconscious. An elephant's knee makes a pretty handy perch when you want to measure his heartbeat. This information helps in studying the effect of the drug. The elephant will soon be back with the herd, unaware that he is contributing to the game management program in South Africa's famous Kruger Park. In spite of the odds against any animal surviving the advance of man across the earth, there are a few that are actually increasing their numbers and their range, such as the possum, who formerly lived only in the southern part of our country, but today ranges as far north as Canada. I suppose he gets along so well because he can eat just about anything and he raises a large number of young each year. Because of this, he can adapt to almost any situation that comes up. When possums increase their populations and live in areas inhabited by man, there are no serious conflicts as a result. However, when an animal is big enough and powerful enough to challenge man in his own domain, then there's likely to be serious conflict. Such is the case in Africa when lepers move into areas which man has allocated for his livestock. 
Jim found himself in such a situation in Africa and helped solve the problem. Unlike many of the animals we've seen, the leopard adapts almost too well to man's encroachment on his territory. He's a very intelligent cat, and to him, cattle are fair game. Leopards are agile and cunning, and powerful enough to kill a full-grown cow. I was introduced to the problem when a leopard began killing livestock on the ranch of a friend of mine in Betuana land. At the request of conservation authorities, we decided that instead of killing the cat, we'd try to trap him and move him to another area. The next time the hungry killer returned, we had a free meal waiting for him. A goat he had killed on his last visit to the ranch. Getting him to feed on this carcass was the first step of our plan. He's an excellent climber with claws that serve well as climbing hooks. A leopard often places a carcass in a tree, as we did this one, so it'll be safe from other predators. Before eating it, he pulls it down to the ground. He doesn't eat it out in the open, where he's easy to see, but carries it to cover. So far, so good. He doesn't know it, but we're going to give him several free meals, so that this will become his favorite eating place. His big canine teeth are not only good for killing, but also for ripping the meat apart. Leopards will return to feed on a carcass day after day, unless it's cleaned up by scavengers. He seems to be finished but we have to be careful not to scare him away. Finally, he moves on, probably to remain undercover for a few days until he's hungry again. We're hoping some of the carcass is left uneaten because it's necessary for the next stage of our trapping plan. We approach cautiously. He might double back. He's left about half the carcass. So now we want to get him used to the idea of eating it near a man-made object. First, it has to be staked down so he can't drag it away. Now we'll place brush on a framework of poles constructed around the carcass so that over a period of weeks, the leopard will become accustomed to walking under and around a simulated trap. Later on, this framework will be replaced with a real trap. After allowing the leopard a few days to get hungry, we return to see if he's been feeding on the carcass. Again, we have to be careful he isn't nearby. There's no doubt that he's been here. Fresh tracks are all about. Uchila had come along to help me build the trap. Poles cut from nearby acacia trees are ideal trap material. The wood is strong and tough. It's a big job, even for two men. And I was concerned that the leopard might return before we finished and be frightened off. So we worked as fast as we could. If he came back too soon, our work would be wasted, and there's not much of a market for old leopard traps. With the partially completed trap in position, Kuchila set to work building a blind. From here, we could observe the trap. Springs attached to the top of the trap allow a false floor to give under the leopard's weight, thus setting off the trigger. The tension seems about right. With a trap like this, you have to test it to be sure everything works. The sliding door is propped up by the most important part of the trap, the trigger. This is fastened by a wire to the false floor and is made of two pieces of wood hinged together on one side. Now I'm going to play the part of a leopard. This calls for a bit of caution. That door is heavy enough to break a man's back. 
When my hand touches the floor, I'm trapped. It's a good thing Kachila was there to let me out. All we need now is a cooperative leopard and the right bait. A special compartment in the back of the trap will protect the bait, a live goat. The leopard will go after live bait instinctively and not be so aware of the trap. The bleat of the goat will attract the leopard from a distance. Sweeping up the area helps to destroy evidence that men have been here. Now there's nothing to do but wait. On the third day, I suddenly saw him in a distant tree. He hasn't seen me, but now he hears the bleat of the goat. now, but this magnificent leopard will soon be set free in an unpopulated area where he will no longer be in conflict with man. Jim, it's always gratifying to me when I see men making the effort to solve a problem like this by trapping and moving the animal rather than killing it. Because the leopard is really a beneficial animal and plays an important role in the balance of nature. This is the proper way to do it. Do you know what the word wilderness means? Of course you've seen a wilderness area where the animal and plant life has been untouched by man, and I'm sure you gained something from your contact with it. Some books say that the word wilderness comes from the combination of words wild deerness, meaning in a wild deer condition. The next time you see a corner of the world untouched by man and in wild deer condition, Ask yourself this question. Should we try to preserve this wildlife? Will we humans be better off if we save some of what was here before we came? If we do, then future generations will continue to enjoy the wild kingdom. <laughs> The company with health insurance for people of all ages has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Like what you saw? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more exclusive content. And visit our website at wildkingdom.com. Mutual of Omaha. Protect your kingdom.